I'm Sandra and I'm going to be doing a video today on Leonardo and the trace function. Some pictures are quite easy to trace and others take a little more doing. This is one in point. This has got very rough edges. It's got little bits in here which are missing, it doesn't have any colour in here. And I've been told there are a lot of people who do sublimation and they are particularly fussy about what goes in and what goes out of a mask. So I'm going to try and show you some different tools to the last video that will help you get the results that you actually want. So the first one we have is mask tolerance. So this is obviously what the picture is like first of all, but sometimes you've got areas like this which are a little bit too white. Maybe you want to get rid of that. So you can pull it in a bit. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. And you might think that you've got it exactly as you want it but the chances are you haven't yet got it that way so let's check off the grid and this gives us our actual mask so we can see here there are bits in the mask which you probably want it to include but are not included and there are bits here which you might well want to be holes but they're not holes either so what do you do about this well, we have a really good set of drawing tools in here. So if I click on the drawing tools, we can see we have sketch, we have the lasso, we have a curve and we have rectangle. Now underneath them, we have the choice. We can have a remove mask brush or we can include mask. Now the mask is the bit which is blue. All right, so this is the bit that you want to cut around. This is what you're going to be left with at the end of the day. So if you add to the mask, you add blue bits. If you take away, you're going to get less blue. You'll end up with holes in your blue. So you can zoom in on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right the way up to the top here and I'm going to zoom in. There we go, nice and close. Now I could use the sketch, but yeah, it's not that easy. If I click on this, oops, go on, start working. Here we go. You can see that this is doing something here, but it's not the easiest of things to control. I'm using a trackpad and it's not that easy. So I'm going to just do a reset. The one I think is best for this kind of thing is actually the curve tool. And this simply lets you click on things and as you click, it draws a line. So it's putting nodes in and we can take it across this line here, like so. And the more you zoom in, obviously the closer you can get, um, the more accurate you can get. And when you've got it to where it's, where you want it to be, just click off and there you go. So this is actually removing. I want to actually include, so I'm going to reset that, put it over to include, and then when I do this, you'll see that it goes blue instead. I'm not going to do it really carefully because I don't want to make this video too long. But there we go. Now that bit is blue. So you can use these bars here to scroll up and down. I want to put something in there as well. So I'm still on the curve and I can go around here and add that to my mask. Making sure to get over that last bit of pink and click off. And there we have that bit done. So these bits here, um, in theory, you could possibly lasso some of it. Is it going to work? Mm, quite possibly not. Now in this particular case, we want the remove because we're going to assume that we want that to be white. We want a hole. So let's see if the lasso will do this for us. Yeah, it will. It will do it, 
Um, but again, because I'm using a trackpad, it's not that easy. So again, for the other one, I would go in here with a curve and I would probably just take that bit out, put it down there and then come up here. There we go. I've got my curve done. So all these tools, and I'm just going to zoom out again so we can see what we've got. All these tools work in pretty much the way that you would expect. So the lasso, you click on and you drag and you make your shape. The rectangle is very, very obvious. You just draw a rectangle and that's going to fill in. Um, very self-explanatory, that one. And the sketch is a brush. So that makes getting your, uh, your mask in place a lot easier. Now, one thing I would probably do is use the sketch brush for, and I want to remove, to think about this, it's that little dot there. So I want to remove that. So we can keep going now, or we can go to next, and it's going to work its magic. I do like this bit. The big reveal. This is the first pass. And now it does the rest. Here we go. We can see what we have. I think it's difficult to see in this light, but there is actually the hole there. And there's the hole there, and the rest of it is all included. Now you have a very rough exterior. Because you're going to, it's trying to catch pixels. But you can even this out a bit. You can put this right the way up and you can see if that smooths things out. If you don't like it, then you can go back. So for example, this area here, I would zoom in and I would lasso and I would take bits out and I would probably go in with a pen. I'm not going to do it at the moment. But you can go back in and you can adjust it. So, for example, I would go in with a lasso and I want to include, I think. And I'm going to go to this bit here and I'm just going to go like that. You see, and that is smoothed out that edge. This bit up here, maybe I would say, OK, I want to put that in there and maybe I would do that. Maybe I would put it here. It'll depend on what you're using the image for and how much white or background colour you actually are prepared to put up with in your image. But those are the tools and they are very, very good. Now your preview opacity, you can do this or you can put it right up <laughs> according to your lighting conditions and everything else. And of course you can show the grid or you can have the grid hidden. So it's up to you. The mask tolerance I did go through before and it's on 31 at the moment. If I put it up, as you can see, you get different effects. Let's put it back to 31 because I was quite happy with that. There we go. And you can use the artwork mask or not, as the case may be. That will depend on the type of image. And if it's a PNG, it will give you transparent bits and so on and so forth. But then we click on next and we get it to do its stuff. It's pretty quick. And then we have our image. Now it's possible that I would have wanted to tidy that bit up, but I said, you know, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm not that bothered at the moment. So if I click off the include holes, these two pieces here will vanish. So I'll do that. There you go. They're not there any longer. Include holes and they come in. So there is nothing to stop me from going back and putting more holes in if I want to. Um, but what you must remember is that once you have gone to the next level and you've clicked on finish, that's it, you're done, you can no longer edit it. 
So on this one you can get a wireframe view if you want to check it out and I would strongly advise that you zoom in to the maximum amount to have a look at your contours and then earmark any areas where there are problems. And we can have clip artwork, hide the background, there we go. And you can add your contour bleed if that's what you want to add. But then you click on finished and your item is ready to go. We go to send design and you can see here is the cut line, here is the image. You send your image to printer and you send your cutting contours to the machine and you are done. So as far as it goes for tools to do your masking, I think really and truly Leonardo has got it licked. The only criticism I would have is if you accidentally press finish, you have to start all over again. So really do make sure that you check, you check and you double check before you click on that finish button and you should have the artwork of your dreams. That's it from me today. I'll see you again soon. Take care now.